Could you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, we give you thanks for bringing us together, for calming our fears, for singing in our, our lifting us up in song, for speaking to us in still small voices, for helping us to know that you are always present with us. Speak to us now that we may hear your words of grace, your words of life. Amen. We have plenty of storms in our lives, plenty of things that shake us up, get our attention, and really ultimately scare us. Now, I'm not interested in a time of great confession here about fears, but there, we all face fears, and if you're going to tell me you don't, then I'm going to suggest that we sign you up with a therapist and help you work out some of that stuff, because we all have something that we are afraid of. It might be a trip to the doctor knowing that you've been putting it off because you really need to get in and have that test done. Because you know, as they say, you're at that age where you should start having these different things. And, and as you get older, that line is more frequent. For you younger folks, it is so delightful to see so many of you here tonight. It might be a test at school. It might be a crabby pastor at confirmation, though I don't know that I'm that scary. But there are a lot of things that scare us. It might be leading, holding evening prayer, although it is something that you know so well. It might be the mom saying, I know she can do it, but boy, it's still just a little unnerving. It might be listening to your kids perform. It might be whatever it is in our life that we are afraid of. There are lots of things. In our journey to the cross, as we face the cross, we're facing the cross with Christ, we're on this journey with Christ. Tonight we are talking about facing our fears. And we heard it weaving through all three of those readings for tonight. We find in our readings that the answer that we are going to turn to is to Jesus as he faces the cross himself. When we look at the cross, we see our Savior. We see Jesus there. Even in his weakened state, when he has been up against a lot, up praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, up being um, persecuted, tortured in the garden, Jesus does not go back. He does not shrink away in fear. But instead, he goes to the cross for our sake so that the very real fears of our lives would not have any kind of power over us. Now, there are different kinds of fears. We can have fears of bugs, which is just kind of more of annoyance, hopefully. And we can have some ma major big, the big fears in our life. It could be a financial struggle. It could be medical issues. It could be lots of different things. But the question becomes, what does that fear do to you? Does it paralyze you? Does it take over so that you become dysfunctional? What does it do to you? That becomes really part of what we need to be thinking about because we know as Jesus went to the cross for our sake, as he was crucified and died for our sake, we know that fear is not something that's going to take over us, that fear of death. Back when I was doing my clinical pastoral education, CPE, I was a chaplain at North Memorial for three months, and I remember um, my CPE supervisor challenging me one day. He said, he asked our group, so are you afraid to die? And I said, no. 
He said, well, you have to be afraid to die. I said, no. I said, because I'm a person of faith. When we have Christ, we know that we don't need to fear die. Now, I'm not big on the process, you know, and I have a couple, hope I don't have to go through that one. I'm not, you know, if I were to drown, that would be terrifying. But, you know, we are people of faith. So death isn't the final answer. Death is the gateway to eternal life. Now, this is not permission to push that envelope. But because of Jesus on the cross, we do not need to be afraid of death. Death has lost its sting. The other part of that is what then pulls us through. What is that go-to verse for you that I keep hounding on or inviting you, challenging, encouraging to you to grab onto? But what is that piece of scripture that's going to kind of wrap God's arms around you and carry you through those times of fear? What is it that you are going to be able to cling to that's going to be written on your minds and in your heart so much so that you will have it ringing in your head at that time when fear takes over. See, it's that love of God that we have. It's that knowing that Jesus died and rose again that fear of death doesn't need to take over and uh, take over us. There is no fear that... Um, that will be able to be bigger than God's love for us. Some people deal with fears by avoiding them and staying away from them. Some people mask their fears by getting involved with things that are not healthy for them, whether it's chemical addiction or other kind of addictions and that kind of stuff. Some people um, get so paralyzed by their fear that they can't even leave their home. And, but we are told that we don't need to live by fear. That's what I was thinking was so interesting about that passage from 1 Kings, that story of Elijah, you know, and his fear. And how... I love that part where it talks about God being in the silence. We don't like silence unless you're an introvert and then you really love silence. But you don't want silence, even us introverts don't want silence when we want to know God is there for us. But God is there even in that still, small voice, comforting us, calling us forward, and dragging us through if that's what we need. We have lots of different verses, lots of places that we can turn to. We have that, that passage from 1 John, you know, that fear. Um, <laughs> I have to pull it out because I just... Oh. <sighs> that could be a fear. Forgetting, forgetting where I put it. Excuse me, here it is. There is no fear in love, but for perfect love casts out fear. Well, we know that none of us have that perfect love, but we know that in God we have that perfect love, and that's why we do not need to be afraid. We as Christians need to open up those pieces of our life that we would rather micromanage or that we would rather control. And we need to um, set aside those things that lock out God's love because of fear. It's time to swing wide those doors, those windows, whatever in our lives that we've shut down and, and locked. It's kind of like the, the disciples that night, um, that evening after the resurrection. When Jesus comes and stands and says, peace. And it worked. His speaking, peace. It took care of all that fear. 
For as the Bible says, and as Jesus himself says in, to us and to his disciples, in that very fearful setting in the Garden of Gethsemane, the hour has come for you to wake up from, to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. So on this journey in Lent, as we journey to the cross, as we face our fears, tonight I encourage and challenge you to, to let God have those fears, to go ahead and name it for yourself, whatever those fears are. Bring it to the cross. Know that in Christ we do not need to be afraid. We listen to that still, small voice that Elijah heard and that the disciples heard so long ago from their Lord and Master. That's what's really cool about that, that storm out on the lake. Those of us who don't think even being out on a boat sounds like a good idea. And they, I cannot imagine how it is that Jesus managed to sleep in that storm. But he got up. And he said to the waters and to the storm, Peace, be still. And it happened. It worked. And that's the promise that you live with too. That to your fears, Jesus says, Peace, be still. Amen.